Welcome, this is what is happening on the sun today, the 12th of November 2011. We have a lot of huge sunspots on the sun at the moment, but not a lot of flares. So after our trivia question, we'll find out why. This photo was taken on the 12th of November 1933. At the time it caused a sensation, and it became the source of a legend, one that persists today. What is it a photograph of? The answer will be given at the end. Well, over the last week, activity has been declining. We started off the week with five M flares, but have only had one M flare in the last five days. You can also see that the X-ray background has been dropping steadily. You can see at the beginning of the plot that we were still recovering from the proton event that we had from the X-flare a few days earlier. However, we've had no proton events since. At the top of the picture, I put a series of Iron 12 pictures from the SDO AIA instrument, which correspond to about a million degrees. At the bottom of the picture, I have images from the NOAA GOES instrument, which shows plasma at about 3 to 4 million degrees or higher. Notice how different they look. First, let's take a look at the general evolution of these regions, starting in white light to look at the development of the sunspots. And the main story here is region 1339, that large region in the north. You can see it starts off very large and decays away quite rapidly. I'm sorry for the change of both colour and aspect between the beginning and the end of this film, but Helio viewer didn't have all of the data yet available, so I thought I could uh, substitute some of the uh, quick look data from the SDO uh, page. Next we'll take a look at the transition region with the Helium-2304 line, which is about 50,000 degrees. You can see the M flare is the bright flash that occurs towards the end of the movie. However, there's a lot of jets on both the east and the west limb uh, during the course of the movie, which are worth keeping an eye on. As we take a look at the flare plasma, this is Iron 20, which is the 10 million degree line. And every flash here is a flare of some size, either an M, a C, or a large B flare. And you can see there's a lot of flares of different sizes going on just about all the time. Now let's take a look at the individual spot regions and see what's going on. We have eight officially numbered regions on the disk at the moment, most of which are in the western hemisphere of the sun. There are two as yet unnumbered regions uh, appearing in the east. Most of the regions seem to be either stable or decaying slightly, and that's an indicator of why we've had so few big flares over the last few days. We'll start with region 1338 in the southwest. It started to grow rapidly on the 1st of November, but since the 3rd it's been in slow decay. It's now very close to the west limb and will be gone in a couple of days' time. It hasn't produced any major flares over the last two days. Next we turn to region 1339, the largest region on the disk. It grew rapidly until the 5th of November and since then has been in slow decay. However, it has produced three C flares in the last 48 hours. But now let's take a look at that M flare again, but now with a full set of data. First with the Helium-2304, we see the eruption that caused the coronal mass ejection that followed. You can also see how the magnetic field is reconfiguring after the flare. Next we'll turn to the 171 channel, which is about um, 650,000 degrees. Note how late the post-flare loops form here. They only form after the high temperature loops have cooled. If you look carefully, you can see that the material is dropping. As the temperature falls, the material is unable to support itself at that altitude and drops down the loops. Lastly, we go to the Iron 20, which shows the flare uh, plasma again. Note how much higher these high temperature loops are than the cool loops we've just seen. The dark material we saw in all three movies is so dense that it doesn't allow the ultraviolet light from behind it through. Next we turn to region 1440 in the southwest. It is a single large spot and has been very stable over the last few days. As is typical of these isolated large spots, they don't tend to produce very much activity and we've had no major flares from this region at all. Next we turn to regions 1341 and 1342. These are twin regions in the north and they've had similar evolution over the last week, both comprising of one large spot and a few satellite spots. Both of these spots are quite large. If you compare them with the scale image of the Earth that I've put in the top right hand corner, you can see they're both larger than our planet. However, they've produced no significant activity in the last 48 hours. 
In fact, they're not much more complicated than Region 1340. So I guess it's not such a surprise that they've been so inactive. Next we come to Region 1343. It too is a single isolated spot that has been relatively stable for several days and consequently has not produced very much in the way of activity. Next we turn to regions 1344 and 1345. There is something very wrong here with the numbers we have for the areas of these regions. According to Noah, they are about the same area, but you can look at these two, 1344 to the north and 1345 to the south, uh, and they, they are not at all similar in area. I don't know what's going on here, There's, I assume it's some sort of clerical error, but I don't think we can trust these numbers. Besides, this is pretty much a moot point because these will have disappeared over the limb in just a few days' time. What about the unnumbered regions? The one in the northeast was growing quite rapidly this morning. When I first started, it was one small spot. By the time I'd um, processed some of the data, there were four small spots there. However, it hasn't developed much in the last few hours. And I noticed when I just took a look at it a few minutes ago, there was a new region coming up behind it, so there's yet another unnumbered region on the disk. The other region is in the southeast, and it looks to be quite a substantial region. There's a large leader spot and a fairly substantial trailer spot just coming over the east limb. So this is worth keeping an eye on over the next few days. While there haven't been many flares, there have been a large number of coronal mass ejections over the last week. First we'll take a look at it from the Soho point of view, which is along the Earth-Sun line, so this will get very much the same sort of view as we would. Then we'll take a look at it from the Stereo Ahead spacecraft, not only to see which ones are heading our way, but also to see what was going on on the reverse side of the Sun. To give you orientation here, if an event occurs on the left-hand side of the Sun, it's heading towards the Earth. If it occurs on the right-hand side of the Sun, it's heading away from the Earth. And you can see there's been quite a few substantial coronal mass ejections that have been happening on the far side of the Sun. Amazingly, with all this coronal mass ejection activity, We've had a very quiet magnetosphere. The auroral zone has been quiet all week with a maximum count of three, but most of the time being at the one or zero level. You can see pictures of the auroral zone uh, for each of the days across the top of the graph. So in summary then, the current solar conditions are the sunspot number is 127, the radio sun is at 174 solar flux units, Solar wind speed is at 425 kilometers per second with an X-ray background on the Sun of B9. The KP index is currently zero, which is very quiet. So what's the forecast for the next week? If you look at the GOES X-ray plot, you'll see that there are two regions on the east limb. The one in the southeast is the region that's just come over the limb. But behind the northeast limb, there's a large region about to come on. If we look at the uh, composite X-ray image, we can see what uh, that region is. It's a fairly large, diffuse region uh, and should be coming over the limb in the next day or two. Behind that, in two or three days' time, there's a small region in the south. Then five to six days out, there's another large region in the north. So I didn't do too badly last week on my forecast. I got four of the five parameters correct. My forecast for this week is the sunspot number will go down. The radio sun intensity will also drop. The solar wind speed will stay at about what it is now. The GOES X-ray background will drop some more. And the KP index will go up. If you want to find out more about what's happening on the Sun, please follow some of the links in the description box below. If you'd like to see earlier editions of the Sun today or some of my other videos, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening on the Sun, you are welcome to subscribe. The answer to the trivia question. It was the first photograph taken of what was claimed to be the Loch Ness Monster, Nessie. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.